Today we're in downtown LA at 1700 South Santa Fe Ave, which is one of my favorite locations to see art. And this used to be a converted tire factory, and now it's home to some of the great galleries like Vilmetter, Gavlak, and Nicodem. This is an exhibit by Ellen Birkenblit at Vilmetter Gallery, and it's titled Other Shapes at Night. And first of all, I love the dramatic lighting of this exhibit. I feel like it really brings the paintings to light and makes them look even more like a scene or something from a movie. And all of these works have been created over the past year, and her color palette has really shifted to this darker, more dramatic one, which I personally love when artists use black. It feels really rebellious to me because it's not really done that often, but I really love it here. I love this little back room area, it's just my favorite. I think this is why this is one of my favorite spaces even within this space. It's just unexpected and very hidden. Across the hall is Veal Meadow Gallery's second space, which has an exhibit by Genevieve Gagnard. And this exhibit focuses on a really heavy topic of, quote, America's relationship to racial violence and draws attention to this country's racial progress or lack thereof. Throughout the exhibit, Gagnard, quote, undermines a host of social hierarchies, standards of beauty, superiority, and race, leading us to this dreamlike place where these narratives might appear absurd and fragile.
The exhibit's title is called Strange Fruit, which is from a Billie Holiday song, which is about Southern trees bearing a strange fruit, which is in reference to lynchings. And Gainyard's childhood friend sings a really haunting and beautiful rendition of the song. And it plays from this refurbished vintage jukebox throughout the exhibit. This part of the exhibit is titled, The Apple Doesn't Fall Far From The Tree. And it features these life-sized Royal Dalton heads that are put upon these pedestals to symbolize trophies. And it's a pretty blatant call out of American beauty standards. This work is titled, The American Dream is a Pyramid Scheme, and it features 81 headless mammy figurines on this pedestal. And it's meant to quote, open the cupboard to expose materials of America's past. Down the hallway is Nicodem Gallery Space, which features an exhibit by Mosey Romney, which is titled, It's Not My Music. And to create these works, Romney looks through their collection of vintage photographs, and they then interpret these subjects and transform them into these paintings and sculptures. And the paintings are mostly oil on canvas, but some do contain some interesting materials like spray paint and even rhinestones.
We've now headed over to West Hollywood to see a few of the Nino Mir gallery spaces. I say a few because the gallery actually has four West Hollywood spaces now in total, which is very impressive. This is one of their smaller spaces, which features an exhibit by Cornelia Baltas titled Lazy Bones. And Baltas is a German artist that lives and works in Berlin. And I just love this juxtaposition in her works. The subject matter, they're very gestural, free, sort of graphic lines that are skating between figurative and abstraction, but they're just painted so meticulously that they actually look like they're digitally rendered. And we'll see another artist later today who's mastered this technique, and I will call out Cause, who is the OG father of this technique. And there's also a contrast in the title of the exhibit, Lazy Bones because these works are far from it. They really require a very high level of skill and more importantly, effort to execute. We're now gonna stroll down to galleries three and four from Nino Mir to see an exhibit by the Belgian artist, Peter Yenis. His paintings are inspired by the closure of public gathering spots during the pandemic and how people were forced into the outdoors to socialize. So in Antwerp, where he lives, people would gather in the woods. So these works depict that camaraderie within a natural setting.
Across the street is an exhibit by Janssen Stegner. And this is my favorite Nino Mir space, personally. And this exhibit is titled The Good Land, and it features a series of paintings depicting the quote, good life. And the painting style might look a little familiar. It is reminiscent of late Renaissance paintings, but Stegner's subjects have been injected with a sense of unreality. And what I think is particularly interesting is how Stegner uses the morphine of his subjects to really play with gender norms in traditional portraiture. I think portraits are sometimes the most accurate snapshot into the values of society at a particular time. The gallery states that, quote, the more hyperbolic expressions of musculature and power are saved for his female subjects, while his men tend to be slighter and more pensive. Stegner also scrambles the settings for his subjects, so he places men in settings where women are known to have existed and vice versa. And a great example of this is this painting, which is titled The Bird Watchers, where two men sit under a blue sky, and this is referencing Raphael's Alba Madonna, which depicts Mary lounging with a young Jesus and St. John the Baptist. The final gallery we're going to visit today is the Holes New Space in LA, and it's not too far from Nino Mir. It's a little bit south in West Hollywood still. This space is so beautiful and frankly enormous. It is over 8,000 square feet. And this exhibit by Jonathan Chaplin is actually the first solo exhibit to be hosted here. As I hinted earlier at the Cornelia Baltes exhibit, Chaplin has employed a seriously impressive technique with these hand-painted works because honestly they do look digitally generated and in this day and age you never really know. So to create these works, Chaplin does use 3D rendering to plan them out. He's inspired by the suburbs of his home in Waco, Texas, as well as mid-century modern architecture and early computer software. And in these works, he, quote, stretches the familiarity of the suburban setting to its breaking point. He blasts apart these neighborhoods into this clean chaos. And these works also serve as a, frankly, sad kind of metaphor for our current economic state and how the American dream of, you know, the single family home is really a broken dream for so many.
And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my trip to LA. If you didn't see part one of this video, I have linked it above and below. So I encourage you to check that out and I will see you all in my next video.